Welcome to Physical Chemistry 2. In the second uh, thermodynamics lecture, I will be looking at the fundamental equation of thermodynamics and we will derive a couple of equations to describe the free energy of systems. So in this lecture, we will look for equations uh, for the free energy and the free enthalpy. And this will allow us to make statements uh, about the existence of an equilibrium yeah, or the direction uh, that a spontaneous process will take. Yeah? And uh, building on this, in the following lectures, we will look at the relations between the four characteristic energy functions. Yeah? And these characteristic energy functions describe um, internal energy, enthalpy, free energy, and the free enthalpy. Yeah? And finally, uh, uh, we will consider uh, the mass dependence of these equations, of these characteristic functions, um, and this will lead us to Gibbs fundamental equations yeah? and to the chemical potential. So in the previous parts of the course, we introduced um, entropy as a state function, yeah? which, would, uh, which should tell us something about the presence of an equilibrium, or about the direction of a spontaneous process. Yeah, and we can express this here in equation 3.29 yeah, as the sum total of the difference yeah, of exchanged energies dq over temperature. Yeah, and this uh, sum total of exchange energies over temperature is smaller or equal to the entropy of state 2 minus the entropy of a starting state 1. Yeah, so this is uh, this is pretty clear. Um, if we now consider uh, essentially our usual case, yeah, this is a closed, isolated system. Um, then we have uh, neither matter exchange, yeah, nor energy exchange with the environment. Yeah, and then according to the first law of thermodynamics, uh, we find. Um, that in this uh, in the system we have delta Q equals zero, yeah, so there is no heat exchange. dV equals zero, yeah, so the volume of the uh, of the system doesn't change, and dU equals zero, so the internal energy doesn't change either, yeah. So from this, yeah, we get essentially uh, under consideration of uh, the state equation here, we get our equation 3.30 here, yeah. So um, what this means is essentially that with every irreversible change of state, the entropy of a closed system increases. Yeah? So S2 minus S1 uh, is always uh, greater or equal to zero. Yeah? Uh, conversely, this also means with every, uh, with every reversible change of state, yeah, it remains constant. So this is the case for S2 minus S1 equals zero. Yeah? And at equilibrium, uh, as we uh, show, as we said and stated and have shown on previous occasions, uh, the entropy assumes a maximum value. Yeah, so ds equals zero at this point. Yeah. So now in mechanics, uh, we are dealing with systems that uh, strive for a minimum of energy. Yeah, uh, and have reached this energy minimum uh, in equilibrium. Yeah. So for them. Uh, we can write 3.31, yeah, which is essentially internal energies U2 minus U1 with constant uh, S is, uh, is uh, smaller or equal to zero. Yeah? So uh, we see that in thermodynamics, yeah, in the general case, uh, we are dealing with a conflict of two tendencies, sort of. Yeah? So on the one hand, we have the effort of a system to increase entropy, yeah, so this is here in equation 3.30, and we have simultaneously uh, the effort of a system to decrease energy, yeah, so this is here in 3.31. So we as chemists, we usually work with closed systems, yeah, that means um, we have a given amount of a substance, yeah, uh, but we have uh, also heat exchange with the environment. Yeah? And often such investigations takes play, uh, take place in a thermostat. Yeah? So it means they are isothermal. Yeah? 
And in the most frequent cases, we also operate under constant pressure. Yeah? So they are uh, isobaric. Yeah? And more rarely, yeah, we also operate at a constant volume. Yeah? And this is essentially, again, deriving from Greek, yeah? isochoric. So let's uh, try to model uh, such a chemical reaction. Yeah, let's imagine our chemical reaction as a closed system, yeah, surrounded by an infinitely large thermostat. Yeah, system and thermostat together form this closed system. So there is no matter or heat exchanged outside of that. Yeah. Now the entropy changes in the closed system. Yeah, are just the addition uh, of uh, um, the entropy changes in the system and the entropy changes in the thermostat yeah and we know this must be larger or equals to zero and we can show that here in equation 3.32 so now let's uh, assume in addition yeah that the entropy change is due to a change of state in which a small quant quantity uh, uh, delta q is transferred from the closed system yeah to a thermostat. So uh, it means this happens uh, isothermally and isochorically, yeah, or isothermally and isobarically. Yeah, so we can essentially formulate these conditions. Yeah, so the first case dt equals zero and dv equals zero. Second case dt equals zero and dp equals zero. Yeah. Now, uh, whether the process is reversible or irreversible from the point of view of a system, um, it does not lead to a temperature change in the thermostat. Yeah? Because of a small magnitude of, of delta Q compared to the heat capacity of this infinite thermostat. Yeah? That means also that the same amount of heat could be given back into the system without any permanent changes to a thermostat. Yeah, because remember our initial assumption, the thermostat is infinitely large. Yeah? So uh, that means essentially um, uh, we get to our equation 3.33 uh, here. Yeah? So it is clear, yeah, this type of transfer of heat transfer from the thermostat to the system is reversible. Yeah? And we get uh, ds thermostat equals dq reversible over t yeah now we can combine uh, both these expressions yeah um, 333 and 332 yeah and we realize here in equation 334 that the amount of heat absorbed by the thermostat yeah dq is equal to the amount emitted by the system delta q yeah, so this is essentially what I'm saying here. DQ reversible thermostat uh, is equal to minus delta Q reversible from the system. Yeah, and we can now plug this uh, into equation 3.34. Yeah, and we essentially get uh, uh, equation 3.35. So now with this equation, we've obtained a relation which is uh, uh, no longer valid for a closed system. But more conveniently for us chemists, it is valid for a system uh, uh, which is either under isothermal or isochoric conditions or under isothermal and isobaric conditions. Yeah? And under these conditions, it can exchange a quantity of heat with the environment. Yeah? So that means essentially what we say here is ds system minus delta q system over t is um, uh, larger or equal to zero. Yeah? And Again, same conditions apply, dt equals zero, dv equals zero, or dt equals zero, dp equals zero. Okay, so now according uh, to the first law of thermodynamics, yeah, um, we can write for this closed heat, heat exchanging system the equations uh, 336 and 337. Yeah, so it means, uh, so first of all, maybe remember the first law, yeah, so delta u, yeah, denotes the change in the internal energy of a closed system. Yeah? Q denotes the quantity of energy supplied to the system in form of heat. Yeah? And W denotes 
the amount of thermodynamic work done by the system on its surroundings. In this case, our infinitely large thermostat. Yeah? So if we just plug this in, we get ds minus du over t is larger or equal to zero yeah, at volume and temperature being constant. Or alternatively, if we keep pressure and temperature constant, we get ds minus dh over t is larger or equal to zero. Yeah? So this looks overall like a good model for a chemical reactor. Yeah? So let's try to work with this. So let's now introduce two new functions. Yeah? And we have here Helmholtz free energy, um, A equals U minus TS, and we have the uh, Gibbs free enthalpy G, yeah? with G equals H minus TS. Yeah, and uh, we've met Gibbs already, yeah, and Hermann von Helmholtz is the guy who came up with this description of a free energy. He was a physicist and physician, and in particular really relevant for us, yeah, because his dad essentially didn't want him to study the natural sciences. Yeah, he uh, wanted him rather to become a physician like himself. And um, uh, it is, however, for, for his uh, work as a physicist and a chemist, yeah, um, but we know him in terms of his work on mechanical foundations or thermodynamics. Right, anyway, so let's take these two equations, yeah, the Helmholtz and Gibbs uh, um, uh, descriptions for the free energy and the free enthalpy and combine that with our previous uh, uh, constraints yeah, that we derive from the first law of thermodynamics. Yeah? These are the uh, relations 336 and 337, which you just see in the last slide. Yeah? And um, we saw uh, that we saw for our closed uh, heat exchanging system. Yeah, and uh, now uh, we get new conditions. Yeah, for the existing uh, existence of an equilibrium. Yeah, this is uh, essentially the equal to sign um, or the cause of a spontaneous process. Yeah, so this is whenever uh, these signs are smaller than. Yeah. So these are these two equations, 3.4 and 3.41. So uh, if um, the change in free energy under constant volume and temperature is equal to zero, yeah, we're at equilibrium. If it's smaller than zero, then uh, we're in the course of a, sp a spontaneous process. Yeah? Or alternatively, using free, the, uh, the Gibbs equation here, um, under constant pressure and temperature, we get dg equals uh, or is smaller than zero. And again, the same applies. If it's equal to zero, we're at equilibrium. If it's smaller than zero, there is something going on. There is some spontaneous process going on. Yeah, and uh, obviously, yeah, processes in which a free energy or free enthalpy increases yeah, are thermodynamically impossible. All right, so I should mention now um, a special property of the free energy and the free enthalpy here. Yeah, so uh, the change of the free energy is identical with a change of the reversible work done on the system yeah, during this isothermal reversible process. Yeah? So um, the change of the free enthalpy yeah, is identical with a work done on the system during an isothermal and isobaric process, yeah, which does not contain any volume work. We recognize this immediately yeah, if we convert here the first law for reversible isothermal processes. Yeah? So we get to equations 342 and 343 and 344. Yeah? Let's, let's deconvolute that. So you remember the first law from the previous slides and previous parts of the course. So we get uh, for the change in internal energy du is equal to delta q reversible plus delta uh, w reversible. Yeah? Uh, if we uh, work at constant temperature yeah, between two states, then we essentially see this, this equation expands to U2 minus U1 equals T times S2 minus S1 plus uh, this reversible work. Yeah, now we can just rearrange this equation. So, so for W reversible, 
Yeah, so this will give us u2 minus u1 minus t times s2 minus s1. Yeah, so this is essentially this uh, entropy term here is equivalent to the reversible heat exchanged. Okay, so um, now look at uh, essentially these expressions. Yeah, here for the uh, for the reversible work and compare it. Um, to our equation 338 over here. Yeah? So if we apply this here to uh, uh, our expression for free energy to 334, yeah, we get our um, expression for the reversible work, yeah, 345 at constant temperature, and we pretty much find um, that the change of, uh, of a free energy yeah, is identical with a reversible work done on the system during an isothermal process. Yeah? And this will become significant uh, in any further considerations and calculations. Okay, so what is this uh, reversible work done on the system? Well, we can pin this down a little bit by separating W reversible into uh, volume work. So this will be the integral PDV. Yeah, and other types of work under constant pressure, yeah, which are also reversible. This is WP uh, reversible. Yeah, so uh, if we if we uh, do this kind of expansion, then our equation 342 here, du equals delta Q reversible uh, reversible plus delta W reversible, uh, just transforms to du equals delta Q reversible minus PDV. Yeah, so this is the volume work plus delta WP reversible. Yeah, now we can essentially um, uh, try to simplify this equation. Yeah, so we essentially work now under uh, constant uh, temperature and pressure. Yeah, so we get um, uh, if we separate the variables, so uh, transfer PDV to the other side, we essentially get DU plus PDV equals TDS, so this is our entropy term, yeah, the transferred heat, plus delta WP reversible. Yeah, now we solve for delta WP reversible, and we essentially get, yeah, using um, Gibbs free energy, uh, enthalpy equation, we essentially get uh, DH minus TDS equals uh, delta WP reversible, yeah, and if we just substitute for DH, we get dg equals delta wp reversible at constant temperature and pressure yeah so if we consider this between uh, so this is again the generic state yeah and if we consider this between two states yeah we essentially get at uh, constant temperature and pressure yeah um, g2 minus g1 yeah so this is the difference uh, in, in the energies equals WP uh, reversible. Yeah. So essentially analogous to this, these considerations that we made for isothermal processes on the last slide. Yeah, we essentially get through this uh, uh, to equation 350. Yeah, and we find that the change in free enthalpy yeah, is identical to the reversible work done on the system during an isothermal constant temperature and isobaric constant pressure process, yeah, which does not include the volume work. Yeah? So now we have all types of transformations of the Helmholtz and Gibbs equations yeah, for isothermal isobaric systems. So um, in the following, we'll put them to use and play around with them some more. So this brings us to the end of uh, the general considerations of free energy. Next time around, we'll be applying the relationships that we've elaborated so far, yeah, and we will arrive at the Gibbs equations and the Maxwell relations of fundamental quantities. See you next time.